Tom here from Lawrence Systems. And in order to run your cloud at home, you need something to run that cloud on. And power is always a concern, price is a concern, and this seems to not only fit the power and price, it's actually quiet as well, which is also kind of a concern. And there's something really novel about a computer this big, being able to run a Ryzen 5 5620U processor, have 16 gigs of RAM, 512M2, and room for a SATA SSD inside. Now this is 10 watts at idle, about 32 watts max, and I've never heard it give, they say 45 dB, but mostly that's only when the fan ramps up if you really load it continuously over time. Most of the time, unless your apps are really pushing hard, it never gets above, well, even noticeable because the fan is so quiet in there. Now it does have a laptop CPU and I'm not gonna tear it apart to really explain this laptop CPU because it's a little tricky to get it apart. Now getting in inside of it we're going to cover here in a second and this unit is only about three hundred dollars i've been testing it for a couple months and i've been pretty happy with it it seems to work perfectly well running xcp and g version 8.3 which does mean it supports without a problem the two and a half gig Intel i226 that is on here. And it also has support for the one gig Realtek. Kind of weird they mix Realtek and Intel, but hey, at least you have two options on here. Now this is sold under the Ace Magic name and I have a link to their site down below. I also have a link to other reviews because I'm not gonna spend a lot of time benchmarking it. I just did the testing to make sure it works, it's compatible. So if you're interested in buying something inexpensive to run XCPNG, which I talk a lot about on this channel, hey, this this does work very well. This also appears to be sold under the, what I will pronounce as Camru E, but they have a slightly varied model over on Amazon. It's only a little bit less, but it is a Ryzen 5 5500U, not the 5625U that is in this Ace Magic, but they appear to be the same box outside of the processor. Matter of fact, I believe there's some type of relationship between the companies because they seem to sell a lot of the same products, but always look at the details when you're purchasing these to make sure you know exactly which processor you're getting because obviously there's gonna be some variations in performance between these two different processors. Now let's take a look inside this box. In the box, we have the unit itself, a mounting bracket. There's also some included screws for the mounting bracket. The power supply brick, and it does come with a cord. It's your standard, what I refer to as the Mickey Mouse style cord. And they also include this adapter right here that allows you to plug in a SATA drive. And I'll show you when we open it up just how that mounts, but this will slide on there. And there's a little edge connector here that you would connect this on. It's pretty easy to connect. Looking at the ports on the unit, we have our USB-C here. This is the one to power it. I added a quality of life improvement by putting a label on it so I know which one's the two and a half gig and which one's the one gig. We have HDMI, DisplayPort, two USBs, and the other side, two more USBs, audio, which I'm not using for this, and another type C. Now I don't believe you can power it off of this one here, but you can power it from here. Something worth noting, if you're using the audio, it does have a microphone on it as well. To open it up, we just have to remove these four screws. And when we take it further apart, we'll see the one M2, and we see two more screws right here. And if you remove the memory modules, there's two more screws. That is how you'd actually get the motherboard out, and that's bolted to the heatsink. It's a little tricky to get back together, so I didn't want to completely take it apart. It just wasn't a need for that, but we also do have a CMOS battery right here. Now to install this in order to plug in an SSD, you simply slide this right here and push it over. and it stays in relatively secure. The SSD itself is really easy to mount. Just line up the screw holes on the side and it will slide in and snap and hold right in. Now, even though that was simple to do, it's a little trickier when you got to do this at the same time, but they left you enough slack in this cable to be able to get that on there and do the snap to get it all put together. Now this unit is from Ace Magician or the Ace Magic site and does have the Intel 226 2.5 gig. I have verified that and the Realtek 1 gig port, but their site does not say that. Their site actually says it has two 1 gig ports. The Camrui, the Amazon link, I've also linked down below, does say it has the Intel 2.5 gig and the Realtek 1 gig that is listed properly in the description, but it description says there's a different processor and there might be. I didn't order the one from Amazon. We actually got this from the Ace Magician. I think this is something you're going to run into with some of these lesser known brands and some discrepancies. So just double check everything before you buy it. And maybe after you buy it, double check again that you got what was expected, or in this case, different 
expectations because there's a 226 on here, but the website doesn't say there is. So maybe they'll put something better in there. I'm not sure. These are just some of the challenges I will warn people about with these. This is one of the reasons we don't necessarily push these towards commercial clients. This is not like our go-to for any type of client project. We generally go with the brand name servers, but I'm still recommending these for people who would like to build something inexpensive, low wattage, build their lab out and set it up. Matter of fact, specifically is because I tested this with XCP NG 8.3. And as I said, the Intel 226 worked perfectly fine on here. I think it's a great lab box. It's low wattage. It's quiet. It's got a lot of power. And I think it's reasonably priced. Of note, and you may or may not know how to deal with this, because these shipped with Windows, there is a UEFI setting you have to clear. There's a link to a forum post over an XEPNG where that can walk you through how to clear that. And that's not specific to this box. This is actually something someone had brought up. I believe it was the top 10 box in the forum post, but it'll apply to this one as well. It's just an error you have to clear when you're first setting it up. Not a big deal. Maybe you're already familiar with those issues. Now, I love hearing from you so leave your thoughts and comments down below. If you're looking for a lot more reviews on these mini PCs and well, just servers in general, check out Patrick over at Serve the Home. That is an incredible channel. He's an expert at it. Patrick is well, quite in depth with all the different hardware. If you want to see more content from this channel, like and subscribe. If you want to connect with me, head over to my forums, forums.lawrencesystems.com. It's where you'll usually find me talking about this topic and other topics on the channel, or hit me up on whatever socials are available when you're watching this. And you can always find all those connected in what I'm connected to at lawrencesystems.com. And thanks.